Welcome to a new episode of Spectrum A Thought. Today's episode is going to be quite interesting. It's going to be our top five villains. Each of us picked five of each of our own. We don't know what, I don't know what Daniel picked. He doesn't know what I picked. So this should be pretty interesting. Talk about it, show a little clip. Yeah, we'll um, see if we pick the same, any of the same villains. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the ones I picked, but okay. you go first. And we'll see if yours are actual villains in my eyes, and if mine are villains in your eyes, you know? Cause sometimes... I only have one that's questionable. Okay, well, it, okay. Zach Morris, or what? Yeah, <laughs> he is a villain. Zach Morris is trash. Yeah. Um, do you want to go first? Uh, no, go ahead. Okay, so the first one I have, you're gonna remember this movie. It's called Matilda. This came out in 1996. And the uh, antagonist that I picked, the villain, is Miss Trunchbull. I never knew her name, it's Miss Trunchbull. And she is crazy. I, have you watched this movie? Yeah, I haven't seen it recently though. You, you, I, I freaking loved the movie when it came out though. It's, you know what, it's still, fant it holds up to this day. It's still a fantastic movie, I love to say fantastic. Um, she is scary. She's a former Olympian. She throws kids out windows. She kicks down doors. She picks, she lifts up her old school 70 metal car, lifts it up and turns it so she can leave. I mean, this chick is crazy. Very imposing woman, so. All right, so I'll have to check that one out. Yeah, so that's so, mine, so. Okay. Um, you could go next. Some of my uh, villains aren't really villains. They're just like the antagonist of the of the movie. Okay, so but they could be villains. Be villains. That, they could yeah. be a villain. The first one I have is uh, the bad guy from Inglorious Bastards. Have you seen that one? With Brad Pitt. I, you know what? I haven't seen that movie. So oh, you're going to okay. have to explain it to me a little. Uh, the movie... A little bit. Well, uh, explain him. Okay, well, he's a Nazi. And okay. uh, he, it's played by Christopher Waltz. The movie came out in 2009. Uh, Christopher Waltz also came out in one of the Casino... One of the 007 movies... He's one of my favorite actors. I know I've mentioned him in one of the Alita? previous episodes. What's that? He came uh, out yes. on Alita? Okay. Mm -hmm. Alita, which is also awesome. Um, he plays a Nazi and he, he's just a good villain. And he kind of has that same character. Um, I don't know if he's even playing a character. It doesn't feel like he's acting. It just feels like this guy is just a natural, just speaking and it just fits in. But um, he's a Nazi. He gets, uh, I don't want to do any spoilers either, but yeah, he, uh, check it out. So naturally, I worked for the Nazis finding people, and yes, some of them were Jews, but Jew Hunter? <laughs> Just a name that stuck. Just Spoil the freak out of it. But, but, but he's, but what makes him a villain to you? Because he. Well, he's a Nazi. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, I overlooked that. I'm sorry, but. <laughs> Yeah, that, hey, that's a big red flag. Actually, that's not a big red flag. That's a big swastika. <laughs> nice. No yeah, pun intended. So, pun intended. Yeah, and we can't put that on there. But uh, okay, so wow, that's interesting. I ha I think I, I think I even own that movie, but I've never watched it. Oh, wow, check it out, dude. It's really good. I gotta check it out. Brad Pitt's um, in it. Cool, man. Uh, and Mike Myers, correct? For like a second or something? He is, and it's terrible. You're okay. like, oh my god. Well, poor dude, huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's another episode <laughs> for him. Okay, so my second villain, I don't know if you've ever seen this, this is called 500 Days of Summer. And it's not a scary movie, it's not crazy. Uh, this uh, is with Zoe Deschanel, do you know who she is? Yeah, from uh, The it's, New Girl. Yeah, she has really bright blue eyes, whatever. Um, it's uh, with her and Joseph Gordon-Levitt, and it's, her name is Summer, and it's called 500 Days of Summer, it's basically about her. And he's trying to be in a relationship with her, but she keeps giving him a lot of mixed signals. She's, it's kind of like, he really, he's really trying for affection and everything. And she's like cold one minute and then she's warm at the next. And he's just all confused. And she's just like, oh, I'm not ready for this. And then all of a sudden it shows him like going crazy dealing with all this stuff. And then later on he sees her like a couple months later and she's getting engaged. He's like, you never wanted any of that life. She's all, yeah, well, I didn't want it with you or whatever. So Ouch. it's, it's kind of shitty, dude. Like she treats him like crap in a way. But she's she really tried it. And she's he didn't, the... what's that? Saying she's the villain. She's the villain for sure. Yeah. And there was, and then it goes, keeps going back and showing all these 
like little hints and signals that she had given in the past that he didn't really pick up on. And then he's like, oh, wow, well, okay. And then at the end, I don't want to give it, well, I'm going to give it away. He meets a girl named Autumn. Hey, Summer and Autumn. Pretty cool, right? How do you like that? <laughs> so that's, it's cool, man. She's definitely the villain in my eyes. It pains me we live in a world where nobody's heard of Spearman. I've never heard of them. I put them on that mix I made you. They're track one. Oh. Okay, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, I just want to take a little side street real real quick. Um, I, I mean, you guys have noticed we're doing it virtually this time again, which is pretty cool. We haven't done this in a while. But I wanted to tell you for Thanksgiving, um, my family did like a whole virtual thing. So there's six uh, boys and girls, my brothers and sisters and I, there's six of us total. Yeah. We all logged into this uh, app called House Party. Everybody had their families all separate. It was pretty cool. There's games and stuff. Okay. But I, I found out during that that uh, meeting that my nephews and nieces that live in Maryland, Rebecca and her and her family, yeah. they say, "Do the Daniel," and they all go like this. And they all oh, they, with the hair straight up. <laughs> well, they just they just make this gesture with their hands. Oh, we're doing the Daniel because they watch our podcast. So you do you do that? Apparently so. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Well, so, then I should I do the Daniel or what? You do the Daniel now. That's I'm kind of doing the Daniel that way. The yeah, you're doing the. My hair is too long, dude, so I can't cool. really go straight up. But uh, yeah, that's interesting, man. That's cool. It's pretty funny. Yeah. Um. All right, it's my turn. Hey, you're yeah, you're up. All right, this is the one that I think you are guessing that I have. <laughs> I already know what it is. <laughs> Can I say it before or no? Yeah, go ahead. But you can't say it. You'll say it after. I don't say yeah. But okay. So mine is Miss. No, no, no. What's his name? Ah, I want to say it's the guy from the Matrix. I can't remember his name. I just know he says Miss. Agent Agent Smith. Agent Smith. There you go. From the Matrix, and that's that's it for sure. <laughs> I, I knew it, man. So do you want right, to? So the Matrix came out in 1999. That uh, actor that plays is a, plays Agent Smith is Hugo Weaving. Okay. It came out in uh, I think some of the Lord of the Rings trilogies. Yep. Um, but that movie is awesome, and he's one of my favorite villains because it's my favorite movie. But he's also the exact opposite of the main character, uh, Keanu Reeves, or Neo, or Mr. Anderson, or the one. Or the one, there's a lot of aliases there, but he's the exact opposite. You guys will see. Hey, hey what or, whoa, whoa. <laughs> does he do that but, in that movie? Bill and Ted. He does yeah. one, one of them one. When oh, yeah. Morpheus jumps over the, the whoa. Whoa. <laughs> whoa. He, you know what? He's, I, I like that villain. That's cool. That's a good villain, man. Yeah, I root yeah. for the villain sometimes. I don't know about you. Like sometimes I'm like, that would be cool to be a villain, man. You don't have as much pressure as like the good guy. You know what I mean? You can fail and everybody's still yeah, okay. Yeah, you don't need to make friends. You don't have to like care about what people think about you. You're just like, I'm going to do my thing. People like me, they probably really like me. <laughs> In a way, a little better. <laughs> Maybe. Um, cool. Well, I I'm surprised we haven't done an obvious one, but I'll say that at the end. Um, but I'll say that N neither of us so far, like a more relevant, newer villain, but I don't want to say it yet because you might have it and you don't know if I have it. Yeah. Who knows? Okay. So my turn? Your turn. Your turn. Um, so my next one is Dexter Morgan and it's from the show called Dexter. Mm. Did you ever see this show? I've seen one episode. It was a show on Showtime. Ugh, ben, you should definitely check this out if you have a chance. It's still on Netflix. Okay. Um, he's a blood spatter analyst, I guess. He works at, like in forensics, and he's also a serial killer. So yeah. His dad taught him how to. His dad is a cop. He adopted him, and he taught him. His dad knew he had a problem, so he's like, "Well, I'm gonna teach you how to kill people, but only bad people." So he's walking this fine line between like being like this investigative. Uh, blood splatter analyst whatever and then he at night he's changes to like a completely different um 
like he just has like his different personality, man. He's more confident. He's crazy. He's you can see how sick he is, but you root for him. You want him not to get caught, and you, you want him to keep doing that because he's hurting bad guys. Yeah, um, well, that's one of my. There's a, one of the villains you root for right there. Yeah, root- I definitely root for him. Definitely root for him. Which is crazy because you're just like, this guy kills people. If he didn't meet his father and he didn't tell him to kill bad people, he would have just killed anybody, you know? And, yeah. and he's trying to balance like a family life and being normal and this crazy person that he calls his dark passenger. Hmm. He calls it like his dark passenger because it's always with him and it's part of him. Like he transforms. So that's one of my. Okay. Check it out, Daniel. You'll love that show, man. I guarantee it. I'm going to tell you something that I've never told anyone before. Okay. I'm a serial killer. Nice. Okay, I have a good one. Okay. Um, have you seen Fight Club? I have seen Fight Club. Go ahead. Yeah, that was one of mine. <laughs> oh, is it really? But no, no, it's fine. I got some other, but go ahead, share. We can talk about this now. It's cool. I'll Fight Club, 1999. Tyler Durden, played by Brad Pitt. Uh, that movie is probably like one of the biggest twists that you'll ever watch. Watch that movie. Um, it's it's a great movie. When you have the the protagonist, I forgot his name. Uh, he's just the narrator. I looked it up. He's just the narrator. They never say his name, I guess. Oh yeah, that's right. They don't say his name, but that he's the narrator because he doesn't know that he's Tyler Durden. Like, he's sick. But what's that? The actor's name. What's his name? Uh, oh, um, the actor's name is Edward Norton. Oh yeah, Edward yeah. Norton. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that movie is just crazy, dude. All together. Oh yeah, it's. I, it was one of mine, dude. I was like, you cannot not say that because he's yeah. a bad guy when it comes down to it. Yeah, but he sure. thinks his made-up fictional friend that he met is somebody else, but it's really him acting out a certain, a different personality, right? Like, like yeah. standing up and being crazy. Like, I can't imagine. Can you imagine being that way? Like, no. I mean, well, none of us can. But that's a good one, man. Yeah, good choice. Advertising has us chasing cars and clothes. Working jobs we hate, so we can buy shit we don't need. Yeah, that, uh, buddy, that was my next one, just to let you know. Oh, that's funny. I'm glad that I was my, that was number <laughs> four on my list, and which is number three on yours, right? Yeah. Because I'm, I'm on my fourth one now, so that's pretty funny. That's cool, man. Um, uh, my, my turn? Yeah. Uh, the next one I have is from a little movie that came out in 2001 called Training Day. Ooh. And this is with Denzel Washington. And he plays this really corrupt, ruthless, self-absorbed, shitty, crazy cop that just in it for himself. Like, you have obviously seen it. And he acts like he's trying to show this new guy the ropes. and But he had this huge plan to take all this money because he owed some gangs, some Russians money and he had this huge plan to steal from some guy and it's just he was planning to frame the new guy it was just crazy man like yeah he gets yeah. worse and worse by the end you just like want him to die you're like oh my gosh you know yeah you're kind of like relieved when he gets shot in the street yeah and he what does he say King, King Kong ain't got nothing on me I love that King Kong ain't got shit on me. I love that part, man. You're you like feel it. You're like holy crap, dude. Yeah, that's he's all. I run this. This is my hood. Whatever. That that's one of mine, man. I thought it was fantastic. Yeah, that's a, a crazy one. The the actually like framing the guy was all thought out because he made him smoke all those drugs. PCP. Yeah. In the beginning of the movie, like he's already. He's already screwed for, for any yeah. drug testing. He, yeah, he like covered his, he covered all his angles, right? Like he just yeah. knew exactly what he was doing. So yeah, wow, dude, that movie is still crazy to this day. So super relevant. All right, this next one that I have, is my turn? Uh, yeah. Okay, this next one is, uh, the rest of mine are more like comic related, like DC or Marvel. I, I believe anything could be a villain, even uh, 
um, protagonist, yeah, like you said. Go for um, it. So, The Dark Knight with Heath Ledger. This was made in 2008. Uh, he's He plays the Joker. And I think, well, this is right before he passed away. Yeah. Um, he played the Joker so well. I mean, he, he was one of those actors, method actors, that would, like, go into dark places and practice and just be this person even off the screen just to get the feeling, just to get the acting down that much. But he played such a good Joker. That's my favorite Joker, hands down. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, he died the way he did. But uh, that movie is pretty freaking awesome dude even i'm not a dc fan i'm more yeah. marvel but uh that movie for sure is, is like freaking awesome man. it has this really like dark setting to it too right like everything's like gray and gritty and dirty and he, uh, like you said i think he he he's like kind of terrifying dude he's yeah. pretty terrifying in that movie he's not like funny at all like goofy like uh who played him jack nicholson one time in the early 90s Jack it Nicholson. was a little goofy. That's when all the movies were super colorful and goofy. I don't know. You should see yeah. some of those. <laughs> With uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, it's super goofy. Ice, uh, Mr. Chill. Mr. He goes, chill. And it's like, okay, dude. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like when Heath Ledger says, why so serious? I love that, dude. I'm like, that, that freaked me out, dude. I was like, damn, dude. Yeah. And he it. says he cut a smile. Well, it's funny because he... He says it a few times on how he got the scars on his face, but yeah. every single time he says it is a different story. Exactly, yeah. And that's even freaky too, because you're just like, well, how did he get there? She can't stand the sight of me. She leaves. Now I see the funny side. Now I'm always smiling. Yeah, you know the part where he's leaving the, the hospital and he's clicking the thing to explode the, the hospital? To blow yeah. The hospital? Uh, when he clicked it, the whole thing was supposed to explode, but the, they were having issues. So when he clicked it over and over and the place didn't explode and he like looked at it and did it again, that was all unscripted because something went wrong with the, the explosives, but it looked, it came out even way better than I think just him clicking it. clicking it. I, I agree. I think that's, I think some things tend to work sometimes, right? Like not planned anyway. Yeah. Damn, dude. Well, I was gonna pick that one, but I'm glad I didn't because you did. So, but I'm glad you picked it because it, that one deserves to be mentioned. There's a lot, but to me, these are some cool ones. Um, uh, but yeah, like my 500 Days of Summer, that's like a romantic love story thingy. But I still think she's a villain. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, oh, I'll just take it somewhere else, you know? Yeah. Okay. Um, so my number five. He's going to be, you're going to know this guy, Walter White. Damn it. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Breaking Bad, which started in 08, I guess. That's what I got from my, from my notes. 08 by Brian Cranston. And he's a, plays a science teacher, correct? Yep. And he becomes this major hardcore drug dealer. And my thought on that was this is the guy he was always meant to be. He's... He wasn't pretending to be a science teacher. I think this is the dude he was ultimately meant to be. Like it fit him so well, you know what I mean? Once yeah. he got into that like gangster drug dealer mode a little bit, he was kind of freaky too, dude. You were like, holy shit. He even freaked his wife out. And that dude really, he was kind of intimidating, man. You clearly don't know who you're talking to. So let me clue you in. I am not in danger, Skyler. I am the danger. A guy opens his door and gets shot and you think that of me? No, I am the one who knocks. No, not only his wife, like anybody, like the the freaking drug lords, yeah. and that's another antagonist that you like the villain that you like hope Go that for. succeeds. Yeah. yeah, for sure. And I wish it didn't end the way it did with him dying. I didn't like that. Yeah. Did you see the the tiny? There was a movie right after called El Camino with, with the pink Aaron one. Paul. Yeah, Aaron Paul. I, I did see that one with yeah. I liked it. It was cool, but it, we needed like we wanted it. I I wanted him there too. I was. <laughs> yeah, you're like, oh, maybe Walter will make a yeah. an appearance. There's one part in that movie where Jesse's like under the sink or something, and he has a lighter to like light the way to see what he's looking at. Yeah, and he it's a lighter, so to turn it off, you just have to like let go of the, the little clicker thing. But he goes like this. 
And you're like, what are you doing, man? <laughs> yeah, he could have just went. But he was he was kind of immature, right? Like that was his whole character to yeah. me. He was everything, every decision he made, he was just like the immaturity of just like a teenager. Like it was just, and no offense to Jeremiah, but, <laughs> but uh, yeah. <clears throat> so All that right. was my five. So you're probably on five now. Yeah. Um, my five and six are both from from uh, Marvel, but I think um, Loki. Do you watch the Marvel movies? I like Loki. Loki is he's all over the place. It's like sometimes he's the protagonist, sometimes he's the antagonist. But um, he's one that you kind of you just like the way it's it's he's I guess a jokester kind of. I don't yeah. know. All right, I yield. <laughs> Uh, or the whole Marvel thing has jokes all over the place, but um, he's one of my favorites. Uh, I think Thor Ragnarok is one of my favorite Marvel to- movies. Yeah. Uh, just because Jeff Goldblum's in it. Uh, I mean, Chris Hemsworth. Uh, Tom Hiddleston is his name. Loki and Thor Ragnarok came out in 2017, just to get that on there. Uh, uh, that's a funny movie. Yeah, that one's hilarious. I love that I, one. Yeah. I. That's a good uh that's a good villain. I actually like him too. I think he's like his sarcasm and everything too. He's just you kind of. I, I I'd want. I'd probably want to hang out with the dude. <laughs> yeah. Let, but I wouldn't want him like screw me over or anything. But he just seems fun, you know. Like he seems cool, and I don't know. He doesn't take stuff too seriously. Obviously, yeah. like almost killing his brother and taking the throne, whatever. But yeah, that's a good one, man. I like that. And probably one of my more favorite Marvel movies too, The Ragnarok. Yeah, it's really funny. The humor of Thor also. I like how he lightened up his character. The Definitely. first one, he was super uptight. And his hair was long and flowing. Long. And the second one, he was just like, freak it, you know? Yeah, it was like, when they cut his hair, was hilarious. a funny scene too, because he's like, don't touch my hair. Yeah. And then he's the thing, please don't touch my hair. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, man. Well, I got one more. Okay. I don't know how many you have. Go ahead. Um, unless are you next bonus round uh, no it's you okay so the last one I have uh, this is from a movie that came out in 1993 called The Good Son and this had Macaulay Culkin in it and he played a character named Henry and I think his I haven't seen it in a while but I think his parents died and he went to go live with his uh, cousins and family for the summer or winter and he ends up trying to kill the dog. He, I think he kills a dog. Um, they go to the top of a highway. They throw bricks and stuff down the highway while cars are going and they make a bunch of cars wreck. He gets one of the little sis, he gets this little, his little cousin sister. They're skating on the ice. It's during winter. They're skating on the ice and he pushes her to the thin ice, hoping that she was going to fall in. I think I see. Tr- he tries to kill the little brother. Elijah Woods in it also. They're both really young in this movie. Huh. Creepy little boy, dude. I mean, vicious. This like cold-blooded killer boy. Like he doesn't care, dude. Like he wants to hurt everything and everybody. Animals, people doesn't care, even if they're family. So. It's disturbing. It, it's if you see it, you're just like, Ugh. just like I can't have that kid stay at my house. Like crap, dude. Like gonna kill me <laughs> i can't get i can't just give him a granola bar on the high c this guy's gonna like murder me dude he's gonna <laughs> shove that granola bar <laughs> in my ear right um, he's gonna drown me in high c so i can't do that stuff drown you nice. but check it out if you haven't seen it very good man Pretty i think good. i have it sounds familiar he's thinking about the end he's had enough of this terrible life what say goodbye no <laughs> My last one, since you did six, is another Marvel movie, okay. and it's it's the the last two Marvel movies. But the villain is Thanos. <laughs> and I was wondering if either of us were going to do that. That was my thing. And it's played by Dro- Josh Brolin, and um, made in 2018. I think the second one might have. That was Infinity War. The second one was probably 2019. 
But uh, Thanos is just like crazy, dude. He's he's a crazy strong villain. He has he doesn't think he's doing wrong. He wants to annihilate half of all beings throughout the universe and he collects the infinity. Well, he doesn't actually collect them, but he gets all the infinity infinity stones and snaps his fingers and everybody disappears in infinity war. Not everybody, half of everybody. And then in The next one, check it out. I'm not going to do any spoilers, but he's a crazy villain, man. He's cool in some way.